It's vlogging time. Come on, grab your friends. We're gonna talk about Minecraft. Journal keeping and going on dates will also be discussed. It's vlogging time. What's up, vloggy pilots? Vloggy Poncho here. Oh man, I just got back from a, a really pleasant date. It was this was the first second date. Uh, keep that straight. The first second date that I'm excuse me that I've gone on uh, from someone I've with someone I've met from OkCupid. The first two people I met on OkCupid, it was one done. The first date was enough to let me know I didn't need to have a second date. But this girl, I like this girl. I think there's some potential here. I, I think there'll be a third date. That's that's good stuff. We went to a Mexican restaurant for dinner, and then we saw the new Godzilla movie, which I gotta say, the new Godzilla movie, miles and away better than the one with Matthew Broderick. I mean, it's a it's a big monster movie, but not to spoil anything, you should see the movie. I, I suggest it's just it's not complicated. It's a simple film, but it's exciting and it has good. Uh, it, it does a good job of building the suspense and the tension in the movie, and it's not any, any stupid gimmicks either. It, a lot of the characters seem very real, and a lot of plot lines actually make sense. It's not just weird, all kinds of weird stuff. There are a couple points when it starts to take a, a page out of a couple other movies, though. At one point, I was like, am I watching Jurassic Park? And not like at the end of the of Matthew Broderick one, nothing that bad. And at another point, I was like, now it's turning into an alien movie. Anyway, anyway, if they're going to steal ideas from movies, at least they're stealing them from good movies. And there's only minor things, like, they kind of just reminded me of it. It wasn't really a stolen idea at all. But yeah, they did a good job of building the tension throughout the film. They kind of, uh, they, not, I'm not going to spoil it, but they kind of tease you with the monster battles, and they, they save it for the end. Uh, it's good stuff. And uh, also has Brian Cranston, uh, who most people would know from Breaking Bad. I look at him and think of him as the father from Malcolm in the Middle. I really like Malcolm in the Middle. That's a great television show. Malcolm in the Middle, for me, is probably top ten my favorite television shows of all time. It's the only situational comedy I've ever watched that really carries its comedy through all the seasons without doing the things that so many other shows do. I'm going to get off topic for a second here and talk about television shows. You can tell when a show is officially over the hill when every character has dated every other character. A good example of this would be Friends. That one's probably obvious. Uh, kind of a cheap shot, really. And then, like, think for example of uh, House MD. At some point, it gets a little bit ridiculous that so many of the characters have dated each other. It's to the point where if you were to try to draw like a graph of everyone who dated everyone else, like with exes and all kinds of other stuff, it would just be like a spider web of nonsense. And you can't look at the characters and really believe that they wouldn't have all kinds of weird hang-ups from everyone having dated everyone else. It's like some weird trailer park community where everybody's everyone else's step something. I've known I've known those people. <laughs> That's a real thing. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Let me turn this off so I don't have glare. Uh, yeah, so you should see the new Godzilla movie. It was pretty good. It actually had a... A couple moments that tugged at your heartstrings didn't make me cry, but very few movies do. Up made me cry. The first ten minutes of Up are devastating. Man, that's sad. Anyway, uh, there were two other things I said I'd talk about. Uh, going on dates, and okay, Minecraft is next. Minecraft, the server is kicking ass. You guys are great at Minecraft. The community so far has been doing really well. Uh, we've had, I think in the first, it's been like about a week since the server's been up. We've only had two instances of anything weird going down. At one point, uh, somebody's house accidentally got burned down, but it was rebuilt, no big deal. Nothing really big lost. And then we had one major incident of griefing where someone basically swiped all the chests right around the spawn area. But uh, we banned them, and I don't expect that kind of thing to happen again. We're now making backups of the world on a regular basis, so if anything like that ever happens again, we can revert to a backup. We'll lose a few hours of work, but it's uh, going to be worth it to be able to repel griefers. I've also been considering on and off the relative merits of opening the server up to the general pilot community, as in releasing it on Angry Poncho. Uh, but if I was going to do that, I would need a more powerful server. My, my computer simply can't handle that many people. 
And so I was considering buying a premium Minecraft server. Now here's the thing. I'm very reluctant to take money from my subscribers. I was very reluctant to ever even put ads in my videos. I, I was thoroughly convinced that it was the right choice, and I thought about it for months before I finally went through with it and partnered up. Which is a decision I've not regretted. I, I did the right thing there. But I, I'm always careful when it comes to asking people for money because I have a conscience and I feel like if someone pays me for something, I now owe them a good or service in, in return. I'm not a charity case. I don't expect people to give me money because my videos are good or, or for whatever, any reason at all. I make the videos because I want to. I make it because I enjoy them. And I'm actually excited. I have three games that I want to LP next and I can't decide which one to do. This is a problem that hasn't happened to me for like a year. Yeah, this is nice to get into this, uh, this cycle. And I'll explain why this is happening too, but I have a little bit of causation here. Anyway, the thing is, if I was going to do a premium Minecraft server, it would cost a good bit of money to have a server that I could host 50 to 100 people at a time. Uh, in order to open it up to the general pilot community, it would need to be that big of a server. I think a population cap of 100 wouldn't be excessive. Uh, that kind of server costs like 50 bucks a month. Which, when you think about it, is not too expensive per person. It's 50 cents per person per month. So I figure, uh, you know, if everybody on average gave like three bucks, we could have a pool of money that would run the server for a year. And that's the only way I would ever be willing to have a server that wasn't, uh, that was like a premium server. Because the total cost of that kind of server would be five to six hundred dollars per year. What I would want to do is have like a fundraising drive where I just, you know, turn out my PayPal account and anybody who wants to throw some money in the pot can do so. I'll probably put in a good amount myself to get it started. And then once we hit the benchmark of $600 or whatever, I just buy a server for a year and we just have it there for the next year. And we don't have to worry about paying for it or on a monthly basis or anything like that. We just do, do the money bit one time and then have it for a year. And then if we have to re-up next year, I think it'll be long enough that we would have even more people and everyone who gave the first time would probably be willing to give again, and we could keep it going if we wanted for another year. But I'm still considering the, the pros and cons of that. I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments, whether you personally would be willing to give a little money to run a server, whether you'd be interested in playing on a server, whether you want to be a mod. Whatever your input is, I want to know, because uh, the more information I get from you guys, the more likely I can make the decision that everyone would like, or that the most people would like. Third topic, journal keeping. This is my nightly journal. It is awesome. I've said in the past, uh, a couple of videos that I've made in the past have heralded the benefits of journal keeping. All sorts of different journals can be useful. Dream journals are interesting because they help you remember dreams you wouldn't otherwise remember. Daily journals help you uh, regurgitate your thoughts at the end of the day, which for a lot of people helps them clear their mind and helps them go to sleep at night. Because uh, it lets you, your mind doesn't, I just got a paper cut, wow. That's the one bad thing about journals. You can do yours digitally, avoid the paper cuts. Yeah, so a lot of people who have trouble like calming down in the evening, you can write it all down in a journal and get it out of your head and then clear your mind and go to sleep. That actually helps me a lot with that. My brain is usually going a million miles an hour. And to put it all down on paper, I don't have to think about it for a little while. For me, the journal is also a memory aid. Uh, I have I have an astounding memory when it comes to facts and information. I remember like 90% of what I learned in high school and college. I mean, given 10 minutes to refresh my memory on any topic, I could be off and running doing triple integrals or talking about World War II or whatever. Stuff that I learned years ago, I could still do, you know, given a little bit of time to refresh my memory, just read over a couple pages, I would probably have enough to remember, oh yeah, Fubini's theorem will reverse the order of integration in order to get a more easily uh, parameterizable space, etc. A thousand bullshit, that's real, that's real math. Although, like, 5% of you will be able to vouch for me. <laughs> so this is a good, but I have a terrible memory when it comes to situational things and stuff that's happened in my life. And, like, I was thinking today, I, I was, I am totally clueless as to what I had for lunch yesterday. I could not recall. I didn't write it down because it wasn't important, but it's just that kind of thing I don't try to remember and so I don't recall. Like, if I wanted to remember, like, for example, if this girl that I went on a date with tonight, if we end up dating for a long time, 
it might be a good idea for me to be able to remember what movie we saw on our second date. You know, that's like early relationship stuff. It's generally considered touching to remember that kind of stuff. And although it doesn't mean a whole lot to me because, you know, it's just a movie, that's not the important part of the date. Uh, it is nice to be able to know that. And when I write my journal entry tonight, I'm going to make sure I make note of what movie we saw so that years from now, when I, it would otherwise be gone, I can read through and go, oh, yeah, that... We saw the, the new Godzilla movie at the time. It was way better than with Matthew Broderick. I even drew a little picture of Matthew Broderick stabbing himself in the chest. Howdy So, uh, yeah, it's all those things. And it's also something else. It's also a way to track goals. Let me find a good one. Here's Loggy Poncho. This is embarrassing. It's one of the worst ones. I'm doing an XX challenge. It's uh, a thing I saw on Reddit where you basically make a grid of 7x7. Seven and it's a calendar. It's uh, the next seven weeks. And as you can see, I've gone through about two, about two weeks now. Actually, tonight will be two full weeks. And what you do is you have a daily goal, something that you want to accomplish every day. You can do something small like stay on your diet or, uh, I don't know. I have a goal but that actually is reminding me to brush my teeth because I have a tendency to forget in the evening. I always remember in the morning as it's part of my routine. But at night, I go to bed at different times. I forget to brush my teeth sometimes. I have it written down now, so every night, I remember what to do. I remember to do it. I also have one, one here for putting up videos on Lucky Poncho and for, and for putting up videos on Angry Poncho. So I can keep track of, has it been like a week since I put up a video? Oh, man, I better, I better make a vlog. I better make a, another Let's Play episode or something. And, you know, it's just all kinds of stuff that you otherwise would let get out of hand. So for me, I have a good goal in here. I keep track of my drinking. I keep track of eating out. These are both things that cost me money, and I like to have a hand on my budget. And so I have a goal that I only want to eat out three times a week. And uh, I've achieved that. I went out two times last week and four times this week. So that works out to be, yeah, that works out even, the three times a week. And this uh, helps me save money, helps me eat better. And the reason that I would want to write this down is because I wouldn't be able to think right now and remember how many times did I eat out this week? It's like, can you remember how many times you've eaten out in the past week? In the past two weeks? In the past seven weeks? In seven weeks, I will know how many times I ate out over the past month and a half. And I'll be able to see, like, oh, you know, I'm spending too much money eating out for lunch. I should bring my lunch more often. Or, you know, whatever. Just, you can look at trends that you, you can't see from a low level. This gives you, like, a bird's eye view on your life and your daily habits. And for me, it helps me keep track of what things are sucking away my time. This is my page for Netflix watching. Uh, it looks like about half the time I reach, I do, I, my goal for Netflix is to watch an hour and a half per day or less. And it looks like I'm getting that about half the time. And the other half of the time I'm watching House MD. So, you know, it's, it's just little things that can help you keep a handle on your life. And this is, I think, really helping me to keep my ducks in a row and live that more Spartan lifestyle that I talked about a couple of videos ago. I'm still keeping up with it. I'm not doing it perfectly. I'm still practicing. I'm still getting things figured out. My biggest Achilles heel is the kitchen. I always have stuff on the counters in the kitchen. And it's just a Herculean effort for me to keep those counters and that sink clear, especially when I make meals that like dirty multiple containers and pots and stuff which I did today. I tried to make bean dip. Failed, failed horribly. Just, it's a long story, but it was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it ended up being really gross. <laughs> not, not even food. Uh, so yeah, I, this has been helping me to stay on top of my goals. And even when I don't reach my goals, like my page for the days I've worked out is just kind of a joke at this point. But I look at it, and every night that I don't achieve that goal, I have to make a mark. I make that big goose egg, that big O that says, nope, not today. And I think, well, you know, it's been like a week and a half now. It's been two weeks since I worked out. I really need to get back on the horse. It's a strong motivator to be able to get a bird's eye view on your life. And I think if you try this, it will give you that perspective that you need in order to see things you otherwise wouldn't. Just my little nugget of advice. Oh, and somebody told me, this is the final point, uh that they showed, I think it was the history professor, somebody, somebody showed their teacher, I think it might have been a high school teacher, I, I don't remember the details, showed him the video that I made about my grandfather's goals, and that apparently showed that video to the class, and it was like, oh my gosh, 
that's really flattering because I, I mean I know that means a lot to me, but it means even more because it, it makes me feel like this is gonna sound dumb. But it makes me feel like I'm bringing honor to my family by uh, teaching my grandfather's lesson that he taught to me. It's a good feeling. Uh, I'd like to thank the person who passed that on. It's really cool. If you haven't seen that video, it, the title is My Grandfather's Goals. And it talks about the stuff that he taught me that helped me succeed in college. So a lot of you are probably around the age that it could be really useful. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Just watch me. Just end the video right there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ellen, tell me in the comments your thoughts about Minecraft servers. Oh, I, also, I need to know, actually, if you know any good hosting companies, what the best one is, let me know. Thanks again. See ya!